Boom! What's up guys, Dino here, welcome back to my racing channel. Before we get started on the video, can I ask any new subscribers out there, let's hit that subscribe button, let's hit that bell, you'll get all my videos today, tomorrow, next week, next month. Also, as you can see, the viewings on all the videos are absolutely exceptional, let's keep that going. Um, there is over 70 videos on this channel, obviously all about horse racing and it'll teach you from the beginners right through to the very end, the stalls, the going, jockeys, courses, etc, etc. It's all on this channel, alright? Anybody wants to drop a little comment, do so, I will answer it as best I can. Now, on to the tip. Well, 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 we did it again. Margoob, 640 Wolverhampton. We done this one down to AT. We did say that Margoob, right for the front, where it be in the front, where it be in the first two, he will be up there. Because of Dane O'Neill, that's his type of ride, dictating from the front. Came out the stalls, got to the front after a couple of furlongs, took them round the bend, kicked on, absolutely bolted up. What a performance. Good ride from the jockey, good horse, won it by three and a half lengths to Elephant and sure you told me in third. Got a good price of 72 as well. Hope you ladies and gents did it each way. Better still, if some of you did it on the nose like what I did. I did say I was going to just do it as a win. And 72 is a really good price. So it's one it's class three and it's won it very, very convincingly. So this will now step up to possibly a listed race. If I know Marcus Tregonin, he might put it into a group to a class two or a class one. But I think because of the way it's performed, it's dictated from the front. This is its first run back, so it was obviously fit um, enough to tackle these these other horses. And as I say, he's won it convincingly, absolutely convincingly. Was I confident? I wouldn't say I was overconfident, but I was confident um, knowing that the horse last year came out the first twice and won its races. And usually when that happens, the trainers usually go through the same procedure with the same horse, get them reasonably fit. I don't think he would have been, I don't think he would have been even 90% fit in this one. I think there's still a lot of fitness to go into him. Um, that's why I think he'll step up his his fitness and he'll probably put him into a class one, possibly a listed race for its next one. Um, but yeah, absolutely chuffed to bits. Watched the race, knew it was one coming into the straight and it was game over. All right, so that's another winner for this channel and for you ladies and gents out there. We're doing really well and have been for probably the last week to two weeks. Yeah, we've had slight disappointments, but we've had horses in the first three. We've had winners, we've had seconds, we've had thirds. Um, and as I say, yeah, we've had disappointments like fourth and fifths and horses that should have won. But certainly the last week, if not maybe eight to nine days, we've been doing really well, really well. All right, so I hope you were all on. As I say, as always, make sure when you are having a bet, you're betting sensibly ladies and gents don't go out there and you know blow your money let's be sensible when we're putting bets on all right now for the bet tip tomorrow we are going to go to epsom now i've had a look at dundalk but there's not much happening there now there's three or four races here that are that are decent class three class one Class 3, Class 2, so there's four races there that are decent races, especially the listed race, which is the one that we're going to go into. The Class 2 race is a good race, and even, to be honest, the two Class 3s are decent races. But, we're going to go into the listed races. I've always said I would rather pick, you know, a good race, like a listed race, or a Group 1, or a Group 2, or a Group 3, or even a Class 1. Um, but as I said in my video yesterday, anything above class 3, it's decent or very good racing. Alright? 
Um, now, the downside to this race is there's only seven horses in it, so it's going to have to be on the nose. And I'm going to say what I said yesterday. I've had a look at all of these horses, not just two or three. I've looked at all of these horses, all their form, um, and there's two or three in here that are entered into the Dante. Now, the Dante, if nobody knows, the Dante is like, Whoever finishes first and second, maybe even third in that race, goes, they'll go straight to the derby. So this is this is quite an interesting race. Um, it's over one mile two. The derby, we all know, is one mile four. The one mile two, Cape of Good Hope, it's not going to bother that horse. Arthur Kitt, it's not going to bother that horse. Turgiev, it's not going to bother that horse. Cape Francis, not going to bother that horse. Macaw, not going to bother that horse. So, is there four or five in here that could win this race? If I'm being honest, I don't think Macaw could win this race. And I'll give you my reasons. I'm not just going to say that just for the sake of saying it. Um... Has it got a chance? Yeah, it's got a chance. But the one I'm going to go for, before I go through them all, and you'll maybe think I'm boring, but if I, if you do your homework, more times than not, you're going to get a winner, you're going to get it coming in the first two or three, even though this one is only seven horses. But I, the reason I'm picking Cape of Good Hope, this horse is entered into the Dante at York, but it's also entered into the derby. Now, if this horse is going to be put into the derby, it needs to win tomorrow. It's as simple as that. It needs to win. Or doubts will go into how good this horse is. Um, Arthur Kitt, if we have a little look, and we'll have a look at what Arthur Kitt has been entered into and if we click on entries you'll also see he's been entered into the Dante he's not entered into the Derby but which means that he can't it's not a case he can't enter into the Derby what the trainer and that and the owners are doing is they've put him into the Dante to see how he goes if he was to win the Dante there's no doubt in my mind he would straight go right into the Derby Turgiev, if we look at his entries, and this is why this is such an, an interesting race. If we look at Turgiev's um, pedigree as well, remember what I've said about any Dubawi horse? This horse is no mug. This is a decent horse. Now he's also entered into the Dante, but he's not entered into the Derby. If we look at Cape of Good Hope, now wait and see what he's entered into. Again, if you look at the pedigree, any horse with Galileo on it is a good horse. Most of the time. His entries, look at his entries. He's entered into the Dante. 2,000 guineas. The Derby. The Irish Derby. Now look at his price for the classic trial, which is the race that he's been entered after this one tomorrow. He's priced at 81. So it goes on the ground. Should I say, take that back. It's went and run on good to firm ground. It's never ran on good ground, but I don't think that will be a problem. Um, Arthur Kitt. It's got good form. Turgiev, it's got good form from last season. It's first race was seventh. That's just it wiping away its cobwebs, basically. That won't be seventh tomorrow. I can assure you that. That will be up there, right in the firing line, first, second or third. Cape Francis could be a little cheeky wee dark horse here. Remember what I said to you? Ed Walker's horses are running decent. Gerard Moss is on it again. So we can't rule that out, absolutely not. 
but I I expect one of these three here to win it and I really do think Cape of Good Hope will win this tomorrow now they are running the Epsom which is obviously where the, the derby is held um, would I be surprised if Cape of Good Hope got beat I would be surprised yep I would be surprised I would expect him to be not 100% fit but I would expect him that the trainer Aidan O'Brien will have him fit enough to win this race because he's ran in Group 2's races he's now running in a listed race which is probably the right thing to do to give him a, a sort of ease into um, I wouldn't say it's an easy race but just to ease him back into racing before he starts kicking off against Group 3's, 2's and 1's so in my opinion, Cape of Good Hope, I would expect that to win tomorrow. Arthur Kitt, I'll certainly give him a run for his money. So will Frankie de Tori on Turgiev. This bothers me, Cape Francis, because with Gerard Mossy and Ed Walker, his horses are running good just now. They really are. And as I've always said about Aidan O'Brien, he usually... He usually needs a run for his horses first before they start getting into top gear. But I am hoping that Cape of Good Hope is going to be fit enough to win this race tomorrow. Alright, so that's going to be my tip tomorrow. 245 at Epsom, over 1 mile 2 furlongs in a listed race. Cape of Good Hope is my tip. Alright, there is two or three other good races as we've spotted out there. Um, have a look at them, see what you ladies and gents think. But this is a, the best race on the card, um, and I fully expect Cape of Good Hope to win it. I'm hoping. Alright, and we can keep this good bit of form that the channel's in. Alright, so that's my tip for tomorrow. Um, I think they've got very good racing coming up on Friday at Sandown, so that'll be another one that we'll be looking at. And I'll probably throw in two or three tips on the Friday. Um, but tomorrow it will be the 2.45 at Epsom in the 1 mile 2 listed race. And the tip is Cape of Good Hope. And remember ladies and gents, bet sensibly. Alright, you ladies and gents take care and I'll see you all soon.